Let the Children March by Monica Clark Robinson, illustrated by Frank Morrison. The end papers of the book start to tell the story already, and this is a timeline. We go through 1963, through the first half of 1963, from January to May. So I'm going to read the dates that are specific to the Civil Rights and the Children's Crusade. Uh, January 14th, Governor George Wallace makes his inauguration speech calling for segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. April 3rd, 1963, the first organized sit-ins take place at downtown lunch counters. April 12th, 1963, Dr. Martin Luther King and other protesters are arrested after leading a nonviolent protest for demonstrating without a permit. May 2nd, 1963, known as D-Day, the Birmingham Children's Crusade begins. By the end of the day, 973 young marchers are jailed. Double D-Day was May 3rd. Uh, more protesters are arrested, most of whom are under 18. Commissioner Bull Connor authorizes the use of high-pressure water hoses and police dogs to control the crowds. Close to 1,000 are arrested. May 4th through 9th, 1963, protests escalate and more adults join the marches. The jails are at maximum capacity with thousands of young people imprisoned. May 10th, 1963, Dr. King and other protesters and other protest organizers reach an agreement with city leaders that begins the process of desegregation. The Ku, Ku Klux Klan holds a rally and the home of A.D. King, Dr. King's brother, is bombed. May 19, 1963, the school board expels many of the student demonstrators, but a federal judge overturns the expulsions just three days later. This is our title page, and it's published by Houghton Mifflin Horcourt, Harcourt uh, in Boston. Nineteen sixty three, Birmingham, Alabama. I couldn't play on the same playground as the white kids. I couldn't go to their schools. I couldn't drink from their water fountains. There were so many things I couldn't do. One warm spring night my family went to church. We weren't there to have regular services. We were there to hear Dr. King speak. We were there to plan. He wanted to raise an army of peaceful protesters to fight for freedom. His brown eyes flashing fire and love, Dr. King told us the time had come to march. If I march, Mama said, I'll lose my job sure enough. I can't march, Daddy said. I got a family to feed. The weight of the world rested on our parents' shoulders, but this burden, this time, did not have to be theirs to bear. I don't have a boss to fear, my brother said, or a job to lose. We can march this time. We'll be Dr. King's army, I said. I'll be fine, Daddy, I promised. Don't worry, Mama. Dr. King didn't like children being put in harm's way. He was a daddy, too, after all. But he said that though we were young, we were not too young to want our freedom. Let the children march. They will lead the way. On May 2nd, a sunny Thursday, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, cousins and friends, we all met at the church, dressed in our best, feet ready. In a silence so loud that all I could hear was my racing heart, we began to walk. Hand in hand we marched, so frightened, yet certain of what was right for freedom. The path may be long and troubled, but I'm going to walk on. Would I be hurt? Would I be heard? Would it all be worth it in the end? I wanted to run from the angry faces in the crowd, run from danger, run from fear. Boys and girls, brothers and sisters, cousins and friends, on and on. We marched, we marched, we marched. Singing the songs of freedom, 1,000 strong, we came. Hate dug my heels all that day its yellowed canine teeth sharp, but courage walked by my side, 
and kept me going. Disperse, or you'll be jailed, the police shouted the first day. Disperse, or you'll get wet, the police shouted the second day. Disperse, or we'll release the dogs, the police shouted the third day. We did not disperse. We kept on marching. We wouldn't stop until things started to change. Hundreds of us went to jail on the first day, and even more on the second. My turn wasn't until the third day. After I was sprayed by water stronger than anything I've ever felt, rough, hand, rough hands pushed me forward, and I fell to my knees in the police wagon. I was going to jail. Dr. King reassured our parents. Don't worry about your children, he said. They're going to be all right. Don't hold them back if they want to go to jail, for they are doing a job for not only themselves, but for all of America and for all of mankind. That night, crowded into a cell too small for even half of the kids, we sang, We Shall Overcome, Ain't Gonna Let Nobody Turn Me Round, and Freedom Is Coming. Our parents couldn't be there with us, but still, we sang, wrapped in the proud and loving arms of our ancestors. I was still in jail, but we heard the, ev the next day and the next more kids marched. The water hoses they used to sting us could not stop our fierce tide. The path may be long and troubled, but I'm going to walk on. Turn the other cheek, we had been taught. Show love where there is hate. The world watched as hate bruised us, but for seven days we walked only in love. The jails swelled to bursting, and even President Kennedy took notice. Daddy said the president received letters and calls about us from all over the world. Our march would become a memory, a small part of a larger story. But we had been heard, and the seeds of revolution were sown. Two days and nights I stayed in the jail. Some stayed even longer. When I left, I was tired and sore, and my dress, my best dress, was ripped. But my smile was as wide as the Mississippi River. I had made a difference. I'm so proud of you, baby girl, Mama said. Your march was what made them see. With nothing more than our feet, voices, and courage, we had done what others could not. Change was right around the corner. We felt it like a cool breeze in an Alabama August. On May 10th, the great news rang out. Dr. King had reached an agreement with the white leaders of the city. Desegregation would begin. One month later, I was playing on a playground I'd never been allowed to play on before. Two months later, my family ate at a diner we'd never been allowed to eat in before. Our march made the difference. We children led the way. Singing the songs of freedom, 1,000 strong, we came. Afterward, the children and teens of Birmingham in 1963 changed the world in ways they could never have imagined. Dr. King later wrote, Looking back, it is clear that the introduction of Birmingham's children into the campaign was one of the wisest moves we made. It brought a new impact to the crusade and the impetus we needed to win the struggle. President Kennedy went on television the evening of June 11th, just one month after the children's crusade, to call for civil rights legislation. He said, Every American ought to have the right to be treated as he would wish to be treated, as one would wish his children to be treated. The following year, Congress passed the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and Dr. King won the Nobel Peace Prize. The children truly had made a difference. There are plenty of ways you can make a difference, too, through volunteering, writing elected officials, fundraising, starting a petition, educating yourself. When asked what she thought the message of the Children's Crusade was for today's youth, Janice Kelsey, who was one of the young marchers, had this to say, I want young people to know that each one has the ability to make a difference in their environment. You just have to have enough courage to evaluate the situation and stand up for what is right.
artist's statement. Time paused when I finished reading this manuscript. In that still moment, I looked around my studio, slowly observing sketch pads, oil paint, canvas brushes, and bookshelves full of reference and children's books. I was reminded of what I have achieved over years of working 11-hour days. As I walked to my easel to begin sketching thumbnails for this story, I remembered myself as a teenager. Many Februaries ago, I watched the Civil Rights Movement documentary, Eyes on the Prize, with my parents. I cringed in my chair the first time I saw children being sprayed by hoses. As the years went by, I found myself watching the series. Now I watch it with my own children. Each time I look forward to Martin Luther King Jr.'s profound speeches. They send chills up my spine. After I heard Martin preach, if a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should sweep streets even as a Michelangelo painted. I don't think I drew or approached art the same way again. It changed me. I hope my efforts honor the past, the Birmingham Children's Crusade of 1963, the next generation, uh, and will inspire, influence, and intrigue the future, the next generation. I hope to encourage them to become the very best they can be, not just in February, Black History Month, but every day. And here are the rest of the important dates on the back side of the end papers. So 1963 continued. June 11th, President Kennedy goes on television to speak about civil rights, urging Congress to pass legislation. July 23rd, 1963, Birmingham officially withdraws the segregation ordinances. August 28th, 1963, over 250,000 people descend on Washington, D.C. during the March on Washington, where Dr. Martin Luther King gives his famous I Have a Dream speech. September 15, 1963, the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham is bombed by Klansmen and segregationists, killing four girls and injuring 20 other people. November 22, 1963, President Kennedy is assassinated in Dallas, Texas. 1964, July 2nd, Congress passes the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which outlaws discrimination based on race, religion, sex, or national origin. October 1964, Martin Luther King Jr. is awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. August 6, 1965, the Voting Rights Act ended practices that had barred African Americans from their right to vote. 